In the last episode, I got an insight into the boat speed with a four horsepower petrol motor. She achieved 6.4 knots. The petrol engine also broke down and we had to be towed back to shore, but the great news was the project appears viable. Today's episode is going to be a little more technical and will describe how I worked out the energy requirements. From the previous testing, I estimated the power required to drive the boat would be about 3 kilowatts. The boat will be much heavier, but the electric motor will provide significantly additional thrust. So I believe this will be enough to drive the boat at 6 knots. This means my 50 nautical mile goal will take a little over 8 hours. I now have all the information about the boat to be able to calculate the size of the solar panels and batteries. The best way to start is with a basic overview of the electrical schematic. Down the rabbit hole we go. This is the basic electrical schematic of the solar boat. There are solar panels mounted on top of the boat and they provide 65 volts. This is converted to 48 volts via a charge controller um, which feeds the motor and the battery. The motor runs on three phase and its speed is controlled by a controller or an inverter. Um, the battery also is at 48 volts and is converted down to 12 volts through a DC-DC converter to run the accessories. I started with an initial concept of 14 panels and a 4 kilowatt motor. The motor is capable of running at 4 kilowatts for short periods and 3 kilowatts continuously. I used the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research sunlight data to determine how many solar panels I needed and the size of the battery pack. The data gave me solar irradiance values for months and time of day. The data is also available for average and cloudless days. I chose an average day, which means half the time I will have less power available, so we'll have to be good days for my journey. There will be some loss of energy through the charge controller and inverter, but little from the battery. After much analysis, an optimal compromise was found. The graph shows the power available from the solar panels after inefficiencies. In blue, the green line shows the power consumed by the motor for the 8 hours running time. The red line indicates the state of charge of the battery with 100% at the top and 0% at the bottom. Time is shown along the bottom axis in 24 hour format. The journey starts at 0700 hours when the motor is switched on and the green line goes up to 3 kilowatts. You can see at this time there is only about 1 kilowatt available from sunlight. So the battery is supplying the power and you can see this on the red line, the battery state of charge decreasing. By 10.30 there is more solar energy available than is being used by the motor and the battery starts recharging again. By 1500 hours the journey is complete but it takes another hour to fully charge the battery back to 100%. I could delay the start of my journey by an hour and it would reduce the size of the battery I need but it is very important to have some leeway in case of unexpected events. This final solution had 16 solar panels and a 5 kilowatt hour battery. The battery is capable of running the motor at its full power of 4 kilowatts for an hour. In the next episode I'll work out how to fit 16 solar panels on the boat and how to make a 4 metre wide boat fit on a trailer. See you next time. Music